in the Premier League race. Yes. Where do you want to start, sir? Well, you referred well to the Carabao Cup final. And for a game that was 0-0, <laughs> that was really entertaining. And Kelleher yeah. and Pe and Pe Petovic, Petovic, I don't want to yep. say this name wrong, yep, yep, yep. were the mans <laughs> of the show, okay? The goalkeepers made the match be entertainer. entertaining. Mm -hmm. Kelleher for me, was the man of the match in the 90 minutes. And, of course, yep. the cherry on top of the cake. Virgil van Dijk, a world-class player that is a reference in the Klopp era, was the man to make it happen. With a ruled-out goal, and now with an yeah. official goal that made everything happen. Virgil van Dijk, one of the best centre-backs I've seen in my life. The importance Alex. that he's had, unreal. Yeah, unreal. absolutely. Um, I mean, he was like one of the last veterans left left on the field at the mm -hmm. end of that game, playing with teenagers uh, that obviously exerted themselves well. But we'll talk about Liverpool more, I'm sure, in the near future. Uh, but yes, mm -hmm. you're right. The, the goalkeepers in that game. Mm -hmm. uh, Petrovic. Petrovic, it's been great seeing him come from the New England Revolution uh, to Chelsea basically as a backup um, in the expectation that he was probably not going to get elevated to the starting role. Mm -hmm. um, and then injuries aside, bad form aside, here he is, and you're absolutely right. Um, he kept Chelsea in the game, but then as the as the momentum moved towards yep. Chelsea beating Liverpool near the end, it was all Kelleher. I'm talking like in the 20th minute, he made that point-blank save on Cole Palmer. Yes. He made another one late in regulation. Um, it, it was a wonderful, wonderful um, affair. But I'm going to say right now, while Carabao Cup, uh, while Liverpool are lifting this particular trophy, hmm. it might have been a Pyrrhic victory um, because their depth, everything gets tested. Um, and you're you're heading into a really busy end of the year. We've got 12 Premier League games left, and uh, pretty much every competitor is still in Europe mm -hmm. in the Premier League. Very so true. it's crazy. Very mm. true. And referring to what you just said, Liverpool played in this final against Chelsea without Mo Salah, without Shobazlai, without Curtis Jones, oh without Matip, without Alisson. Gravenberch even got injured in this game without Diogo Jota, yep. without Darwin Nunes, and this Chelsea team, the one billion was spent, couldn't do the job that they must yeah. have done. Cole Palmer was Brutal. the best player of Chelsea. Still is. He's under 21. Yep. That shouldn't be <laughs> the case. Who Chelsea spends one billion, they should be competing, and they should be winning against the Liverpool B team with all these players out. But once again, world-class Virgil van Dijk made it happen Klopp is yeah. Klopp won no Klopp is in four was in four fronts to win four titles Klopp has won yeah. one of the first titles with the Carabao Cup he's still in three yeah. FA Cup Europa League and the Premier League and that's the greatness of Jurgen Klopp he doesn't spend one billion like Chelsea but he gets the job done Robertson what a legend references were created yeah. Trent Alexander-Arnold and many more that's why in uh, this video, we'll we'll be talking about who are the best managers in the world of football, and Klopp must be in that mm -hmm. discussion because the greatness of, of what he does consistently I every mean, year with Liverpool. Uh, the 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 one thing that is very very apparent to me mm -hmm. is that whether you're an 18 year old kid walking into the team due to injuries, or you are you know Simicas coming off the bench every now and again, mm -hmm. or you are. Uh, uh, Joe Gomez, right? Who is like the ultimate Swiss army knife for them. And I know he gets ridiculed from time to time, but listen, every one of these players mm -hmm. knows exactly how Jurgen Klopp wants them to play the game exactly. of football, uh, relentless pressing. Um, and even if their technical abilities or their, their tactical awareness doesn't yet, it's not yet up to speed to be a part of that 11, mm -hmm. they're still bathed in the fact that like Jurgen Klopp, True. uh, is like, this is what he wants done. Mm -hmm. And they play they were outmatched at times and, and Chelsea should have put that game away mm -hmm. and they didn't. A lot of it was because these guys are just built in the influence of Jurgen Klopp. And that is going to be so interesting to see when this liver, like Jurgen Klopp has already called Liverpool, Liverpool 2.0. We got to remember mm -hmm. Liverpool has gotten rid of Milner. They got rid of uh, Oxley Chamberlain, uh, Jordan Mane. Henderson, uh, Roberto Firmino, Sadio Mane, all of these guys. Liverpool 1.0 is gone. 2.0 is here. <laughs> On top of that, Klopp is gone at oh. the end of the season. I'm going to say it. If if his job was to hand off Liverpool um, in a obviously a better state than than when he came in, well, I think he's pretty much damn well done his job. I'm top, just top job. 
I am just like, what is going, who is going to take over for the Reds from here on out? That's going to be insane to figure out. <laughs> Especially because we're going to mention in this video, the best managers yep. in the world to be taking over jobs like Liverpool. Comment who you think we're going to mm. be suggesting. But the big question in the Premier League, because of last season, yes. they bottled it. I don't believe they did because Man City's greatness is more than evidence. But can Correct. Arsenal win the Premier League? My answer is no mm -hmm. without a striker. I respect what Kai Havertz is Ooh. doing. I think he's playing better. And every time Kai Havertz scores a goal, Arsenal never lost the game. They actually won all of the games. But they need a new okay. CDM because Thomas Partey is absent a lot of games. And they need a reliable striker because Saka cannot be your top scorer this season. 12 goals in the Premier League. I, no, more than 12. But I, Saka cannot be that player. They need to sign a striker, whoever it is. Dusan Vlahovic, I think right. Lautaro is impossible. But if Arsenal, next season, sign Dusan Vlahovic, I really believe they could take the pedestal from Man City. And a Douglas Luiz. Interesting. But I do believe mm. er, uh, Edu Gaspar is thinking in this scope of things. Because yeah. it's the last transfer. This summer is the last summer that I believe Arsenal will spend big bucks money with a new CDM, a new striker, a new center back, and maybe a new winger too. They're going to go bold. Yeah. It's going to be out there oh, at the yeah. time. It's got to prove himself. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and if he had laid out his planned, uh, uh, plan in the phases that he had laid it out, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you're right. It's like, give me this type of backing for this many seasons if I can show you progress. Mm -hmm. um, and if not, obviously cut bait and get the heck rid of me. But... <laughs> Uh, I still believe in this this Arsenal project. I do. And I've been a skeptic. Um, there have been highs. There have been lows. Um, and I just think we need to remember where we came from last season. True. Um, Manchester City had to rattle off 14 wins in a row mm -hmm. in the Premier League win. I don't know. I mean, unless they had a massive lead, that's not normal. Alex, right? That's sure. not normal for any team, let alone a super club. That's not normal for, for a team to be able to do that. So you you alluded to it. You said it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, previously, it, it was more Manchester City's insane quality in the second half of that scene and almost flawlessness uh, that won that last year. Uh, and yeah, okay, there was a run of form that hurt. Well, guess what? So far, with 12 games remaining in the season, uh, that has not yet announced itself. Right in its entirety, there haven't been 14 games in a row won, and we've still got plenty of time. Mm -hmm. But it could be, and, and this is why my short answer is: it, Can Arsenal win the title? My short answer is yes, they absolutely can. Will they? And I, I think they. No. I think they can. <laughs> I think they can, though, without a striker. I think they have a better chance to win this thing than Liverpool do currently, with the injury plague that is unfortunately affecting that that room right uh, everything it's it's pervasive right Salah can't even necessarily stay healthy for a long period of time I know there's some resting whatever but back to Arsenal we have to remember six six Premier League games in 2024 they've scored 25 goals they've conceded three they beat Liverpool I believe three to one right mm -hmm. in that one of those games they've averaged four goals plus a game um, and they still don't have said striker they have conceded only seven shots in the last five games, Alex. And yeah, you. Th this is a small mm -hmm. snippet because that's one-sixth of a season per se or one-seventh of a season. Uh, but it, we are seeing something we didn't see last season with Mikel Arteta. Mm. Uh, Mikel Arteta, I think, was bit by the inability to uh, be tactically flexible. And I do not... I am not holding myself out as any sort of a tactical genius. In fact, that is a very low point in my my footballing IQ, right? Mm. But I have noticed some changes playing Trissard. Now, some of it's out of necessity, but playing Trissard as a false mm -hmm. nine, Havertz as a false nine. We've seen necessity, some things yes. th th that, that have worked, but really it comes down to the cornerstone. We remember William Saliba went down last season. Mm -hmm. That's not the sole reason why Arsenal went down, but William Saliba is getting back into prime form. Mm -hmm. Gabriel is getting back into prime form. Defense can, in fact, win a Premier League title. And I think Arsenal has a better chance than Liverpool to do so. Then you ask me whether or not they're going to do it. I still can't pe get past the, the, the narrative of, I, I, 
I can't. I can't say yes, they're going to do it. But I'm going to say that they have a much better chance than people are giving them credit for. Whoa. And I think Arsenal is the strongest contender right now. I still believe the Jurgen Klopp last stance last season mentality towards the locker room of Liverpool yeah. edges for edges for me with Arsenal still. And I'm going to say this month of February has been unbelievable for Arsenal. They beat Liverpool yep. 3-1. They beat Burnley 5-0. Mm -hmm. They beat West Ham in London 6-0 and they beat Newcastle 4-1. It's unreal. Oh, 25 goals scored yeah. in their last five games in the Premier League. But they still yep. got the humble pie by Porto. They still had a game yeah. in the Champions League yeah. with zero shots on target. And that happens because they have no striker. When the time, when Don't. clutch time comes, I see an Arsenal mm -hmm. team that struggles. And it's because it's a young team still. They don't have all veterans in this team. Jorginho is perceived no. as a veteran because he's won a Champions League at Chelsea. And he deserves that role in that team. But I still believe mm -hmm. a Liverpool squad with an Alisson, Van Dijk, a Salah, a Shobozlai that is the captain of Hungary at 23, they have stronger leaders. And I believe the fitness is a problem. But it will be overcome. Huge problem. I think it will be okay. overcome ahead of Arsenal. Wow. And what, <laughs> yeah. I, even even with, I mean, I mean, Kelleher was great in the Carabao Cup, mm -hmm. right? But he has also had some eh, quote unquote howlers uh, sure. for them so far Just this like season. Ryan. So I don't know if that's a turning of a leave. Oh, absolutely right. But Trent is out until mid March. You know, Allison is out until the end of March. Diogo Jota is out until mid April. Mm -hmm. um, Sala is kind of spot worthy. Um, Sobosly, same thing. Uh, we we do have to even their depth depth. Like mm -hmm. a Tiago is still on the table. I know sure. that's kind of a joke, well, you know, and I really shouldn't say that. But even their youth, mm -hmm. we're 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 going into the the second part of the youth revival right at liverpool uh digging into the academy here we've got ben doak that's not uh, available for them we've got uh true, stefan bajatic remember when he came on the field i mean it, it goes so deep that that for me is really really tough to get hold a uh, hold of considering um yes their premier league schedule liverpool's premier league schedule mm -hmm. is sort of easier I guess you could say compared to a Manchester City and an Arsenal's mm -hmm. to end the season but they also have Europe and that depth is going to get just tested now with Arsenal with Arsenal Alex the they still have to go the longest serving uh, 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 players at Arsenal is El Nenny and then you see the yeah. team of Liverpool that's what I'm saying the experience Harvey Elliott how mm -hmm. many years has he been in this team he's been more than four <laughs> years and he's a youngster yeah. still it's mad. It's what it's mad what we see still. Money. Yeah. Arsenal it is, needs but to win trophies. Arsenal mm -hmm. needs to be a successful team in terms of silverware. Arteta, mm -hmm. if he's trophyless this season, next season, it's gonna be four years without a trophy. People need to start putting question marks. The foundations are built. Now it's mm -hmm. time for success. Odegaard is your captain at 25. Saka is now 22. Martinelli's getting older. Saliba's getting older. Declan Rice cost a hundred million. People expect mm -hmm. results with what being spent. Man City oh, yeah. with Guardiola in the same amount of time that Arteta has been at Arsenal, he's had results. Yes, he inherited a better team, but he had immediate results, and you need to do that. Four years is a well, lot of time. It is, it is. Um, but there has been progress. I mean, they are, they are contenders, and I, I know we are saying that they need a striker. Well, it's not coming before the end of the year, right? True. Um, and Bukayo Saka has done everything he can to step up, while Martinelli's been kind of whatever uh, flushed out here. But Saka, eight goals in his last seven games, mm -hmm. eight goals and an assist. Um, and that is, you're right. It's the biggest reason they also won't win. A uh, mm -hmm. won't win the Premier League this season is the fact that they don't have the depth in their front three that a mm -hmm. Liverpool has or a Manchester City has. We just listed almost every Liverpool player in the hospital, basically, right, in the physio room, mm -hmm. and they still have a really dang good Trio, as you like to call it, right up top, mm -hmm. uh, really potent because it's Luis Diaz. Darwin wasn't even on the field. I don't know if we mentioned that, but we probably did mm -hmm. for this Carabao Cup. Um, it 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 is going to be the reason I think that front three is going to be the reason why if Arsenal do not win this thing, it, it's why. But defense, 
And set pieces can take you pretty far True. as far as the rest of the season goes. And set pieces for Arsenal, they're the best team in the league by far. They True. have scored 19, 19 if I'm not mistaken, this season, 19 goals off of set pieces, two versus Newcastle alone. It was almost depressing to watch um, and, because they couldn't figure it out. Mm -hmm. uh, Jacob Q Kiwi or uh, Kai Havertz is good on this. Gabriel is good on this. Saliba is good on this. 30% of their goals this season have come off of set pieces. That's not counting penalties. Mm -hmm. That's not counting penalties at all. So I'm... I'm really intrigued to see uh, because you're looking, you're staring down a March 3rd Manchester Derby, mm -hmm. right? Now, United's nowhere close to the top three. City They're not getting it. there, right? I believe City will win it too, but hey, you want to play a really nice spoiler and have a uh, catch up a few point wise if you want to at least get into Europe by the end of the season, mm. go out. Win the Manchester City, win the Manchester Derby, which has obviously been blue for a very long period of time. Um, but Arsenal, for me, the more I look at this team, I think that they have a, a, a better chance to win it, obviously, than Liverpool. And I am not going to say they're going to win it, but like I'm pretty close. I'm pretty close to wanting to flip my, uh, flip my vote. If you will, <laughs> don't uh, flip it, from Bretton, Manchester please. City to Arsenal. Don't I'm flip not it, going please, to, Bretton, because we're, the, this is the di main difference from the Arsenal squad mm -hmm. and the Man City squad. It's the world class yeah. proven players. And that comes with years mm -hmm. of football heritage that Pep Guardiola has developed. World class players in the City team Kevin De Bruyne, Rodri, Holland, Ederson. Phil Foden is right. now a world-class player, ahead of Saka, in my opinion, with talent, because of the amount of titles he's won and the importance that he shows. 16 goals in February, just like Saka, true. And a Bernard Silva and a Ruben Dias, too, to add to these world-class players in this Man City team. This is the main reason yeah. why they're favorites towards winning the Champions League and to win the fourth consecutive Premier League title, that it would be the first time in the history of the Premier League because of this world-class amount of players in this team, in my view. And even, um, well, yeah. I saw this stat and I was flabbergasted. I was shook. People, please <laughs> listen to this. The goal difference of the last three seasons in the Premier League of Man United has been 15. Man City <laughs> has been more than 170. More than 170. So you mean to say the difference of the goal difference of Man United and Man City is more than 155 goals. That is mad Ooh. in the last three seasons. And it's a testament to one of the greatest teams we've seen ever in the Premier League with Pep Guardiola. The job is more than seen. It's historic era what's happening now. And it's more than 10 <laughs> times what Man United have. And... <laughs> so, I wanted to change here because uh, I think that Arsenal, we disagree, and I respect that. But I still want to know this. And I think Porto, mm -hmm. Porto against Arsenal showed a lot of underrated players in the world's perspective. Dio Costa, for me, is one of the best goalkeepers in the world. He showed it right there. Alan Varela, underrated. Galeno, underrated. Mm -hmm. Pepe, underrated. Evan Nielsen, João Mario, many quality players play for this Porto team, and even Chico Conceição that irritated yep. many Arsenal fans <laughs> well, because mm -hmm. of his talent, too, in my point of view. But I wanted to ask you, Breton, do you believe Arsenal yeah. will go through against Porto? I do. I do. Yeah. I still believe um, that that's not the case. I want to see it. Uh, I want to see Arsenal I, I, grab the game by the neck and make it happen in the Champions League. And I'm... Yeah, well... I'm not... I'm, I'm a skeptical. You are? I'm a skeptic. I, I, I hear that. I hear that. I just know that um, the Emirates is a different place. And uh, I'm not I'm not as worried as you are. It was an uninspired performance uh, versus Arsenal. Um, and I, this isn't talking ill of Porto. Uh, but I don't know. If we were looking at Arsenal versus Sporting right now, or we were looking at uh, Arsenal versus Benfica, um, maybe, no. maybe just based on the quality we've seen. I, 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 I don't know, man. I, I think Port Arsenal will be fine. I think they'll go through. I think Porto I think in the through. Champions League is the worst team that Arsenal could face of the Portuguese three. Even though Benfica has a better team on paper, Sporting has a great record in Primera Liga. Sergio Cossesão okay. in the Champions League is different breed. And the truth is, the heritage of Porto in this competition, they won the Champions League this century. Did Arsenal win it? 
No, they didn't. And they have Arsene <laughs> Wenger, that was one of the best managers in the history of football and definitely in the Premier League. And they still bottled it. Arsenal never won a Champions League trophy. And even with Arteta, it's their first time in the Champions League. It's not said you yep. say Son's first time in the Champions League with the Sporto team. So, oh, <laughs> e easier route to get there. Route get out of here. But easier Sergio route Conceição to get there. Knocked out yeah. Cristiano Ronaldo when he was at Juventus. A Porto team that was weaker. So I even think the the CV, the experience, mm -hmm. I'm going to, with time, I think more people will start putting question marks with Mikel Arteta. But let us know. Do you agree or disagree wow. with my take? Or do you agree with Bretton with Mikel Arteta that is showing good signs at Arsenal? But Man United. Yeah. Man United for oh me have the biggest question mark in terms of manager in the Premier League. Uh, I think yeah. Sir Jim Ratcliffe will not mm. be dependent. No, I think Sir Jim Ratcliffe will not be mm. trusting Eric Ten Hag to be the manager of Man United. He got Lisandro Martinez. He got Anthony. Mm -hmm. He was critical towards the Mason Mount coming to the club. And look at their output. It's non-existent. It's non-existent. Man United needs to do better. And honestly, I'm going to say, because I got... A bit of uh, some answers on Twitter because of this, and I'll say this yeah. confidently. Man United would be in a much better scenario if they had Ruben Amorim instead of Eric Ten Hag. You may say it's Portuguese bias, but when you see this video in two, three years' time, you'll say this guy was right. Because what Ruben did at Sporting was greatness. They hadn't won a league title in 20 years. He developed many players at the club. João Palhinha, Ugar, Pedro Pouc, Nun Mench, Mateus Nunes, mm -hmm. that even Pep Guardiola said was one of the greatest midfielders he's ever seen. He went bold with that statement, though. But Ruben Amorim yeah. was the man that made that happen. And Gonzalo Inácio that played three games for the under-23 mm. team of Sporting. But for Sporting first team, 150. And that happens because Ruben says, no, he's way too good to be in the under-23 team, Gonzalo Inácio. That would happen with Kobe Maino maybe earlier with a Ruben Amorim presence. Yeah. I feel that's uh, a big question mark. Eric Ten Hag is not the right guy. Well, yeah. I, well, I'm I'm in agreement with Eric Ten Hag not necessarily being the right guy, but he's probably the only guy uh, they've got right now. I mean, Ratcliffe can say what Ratcliffe says, but it, it takes a lot more to actually build out a plan. Um, and he's got to wait until he assembles his group of Avengers, much like Chelsea tried to do before they started spending big bucks. Uh, but he's got to build his backroom Avengers to start to figure out what this next few years looks like uh, at Manchester United. But uh, Eric Ten Hag, I think there is a little bit of denial and there's probably a little bit of truth in that they are taking baby steps forward, I guess. No, no, no. Um, by seeing that. a little bit of development. I, I Well, there's a lot more than just Eric Ten Hag. I mean, I don't see Bruno Fernandes being a part of this team moving forward. In fact, I'm getting annoyed by Bruno Fernandes uh, and his constant bickering. I know that's a part of his game and the gamesmanship, but I'm getting just sick of seeing it. Hoyland being out, the lack of depth, but a few pieces that have kind of hit. I mean, they need like another overhaul. Um, and I don't know. But going back with what Eric Ten Hag versus Ruben. Ru I like him. But Ruben, Ruben Amarim, I, I get what you're saying about him. But remember why Eric Ten Hag was picked in the first place, too. I mean, it was riding on the back of what he had done with Ajax. Like, that can't be necessarily just swept under the rug. Mm -hmm. Just because you did it with a team in a smaller league right? Doesn't make it a less prestigious league or anything like that, or a wonderful development league. I credit Ten Hag no, did the same dang no, thing no, with a bunch of nine, with a bunch of 19 year olds. He had Omar with a bunch Mars of 18 and Edwin van der Sar with him. Ruben Amorim. Well, he's the man. He's the yeah. man. Well, then, well, there you go. Get van der Sar and get uh, Overmars in at Manchester United and let them cook. No, no. No, no, no. They <laughs> well, won't cook why anything. Why not? Because well, Omar Berada, why not? I think, will not go with that decision. Because well, he's not going to go Portuguese. I, I think okay. Ruben Emery would do a better job than Eric Ten Hag. And I think with time, that will be shown. But that's easy to and say. Even to, that's it, easy to say. Why is it easy it's, to say? Well, I mean, that's that's just easy to say, right? Um, we're not going to know. He's not going. Ruben Amarim will not be appointed Manchester United boss. He so that's be. why it's easy to say. He could I be. don't think so. Not not with Ratcliffe. And, I don't mm, no. But so you anyway. Say, so, you say, so I just want to get this on tape. It, it's funny because... Day, but, to, you say right now, if yeah. you had to pick a manager between Eric Ten Hag and Ruben Amarim, you'd pick Eric Ten Hag. 
I would for continuity's sake right I'd now. I'd never yes. pick Eric Ten Hag right now ahead of Ruben Emery. And I think you coming, fine. you coming from the shown. person that was telling me that it's all about the top floor and waiting until that's in place Radcliffe's and keeping place. the continuity at managerial. Well, he's not, he's been in place what ten days. I mean, he's barely been in place. Give the guy time. It doesn't happen overnight, nor should it happen overnight. Exactly. Um, so I think I think a lot more needs. I do think a longer leash. Weirdly enough, because I have been heavily critical of Ten Hag like all season, right? Um, I think there needs to be a longer leash beyond that. But you're right. If Ratcliffe comes in and he says, "I want no Ten Hag. I, I need I need to start this managerial search over," or they started that six months ago and there's already rumblings. Mm -hmm. Very different story. But I haven't heard anything of that just yet. Now, Ten Hag, you're right. He's swimming for his life currently. Mm -hmm. He is. He's saying, well, look, I brought in, I, I handed Omari Forsen his first <laughs> Premier League start. I, uh, I have Kabi Mainu. Well, we all knew Kabi Mainu was good enough before exactly. you did, sir, right? Exactly. But when it comes to it, nothing, you're, you're absolutely right in that on the pitch, they just lost for the first time in 20 plus years at Old Trafford to Fulham. Tell me right? one player that's, that, that is much that, better that is the than Eric Ten Hag at Man United. Uh, there is literally nobody right now. Rashford had a glimpse. I, Diogo Dalo showed no. a lot of hard work. I don't see Garnacho, any maybe. that's better. Garnacho, I think that Salen would have shown with time. Kobe Maino, yeah. I think that Salen would have shown with time. Casemiro, a right. world-class player right. in the past, and Man United but you had a give... good last season. But now... Where are the leaders? And Anthony and right, Lisandro Martinez cost more than 150 million to Man I, United. And if we call, and if we caught, uh, if we put Jaden Sancho in that same sentence, it's more than of 200 course. million spent. So Eric Ten Hag yep. has cost Man United more than 200 million spent with three players: Anthony, Sancho, Lisandro uh, Martinez, and none of them are showing world-class results consistently. That is a real uh, problem. And I think Sir Jim Ratcliffe will not bet on a man that creates big problems when in the past he had such an icon like Sir Alex Ferguson. And I'm not saying well, Ruben I is the new Alex Ferguson, but Man United has to invest in the new big icons of the future of football. And Ruben is one yeah. of them. Is one of them. Well, I mean, I think also one of the biggest things, one of the biggest issues, which we all knew was going to happen from day one after Sir Alex Ferguson stepped down, was that you can't necessarily hold everybody up to any sort of Alex Ferguson, um, Sir Alex Ferguson uh, comparison uh, because you're not going to get that. That's Martial. lightning in a bottle that was built over many, 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 mm -hmm. many years. So it, it really, I, I understand what like you're saying, but for me, the continuity oh, from here on oh, out is going to it, it to be honest it's <laughs> it's damned if you do damned if you don't because yeah. if you get Amarim in and you have you know seven of your center backs and right backs out and your your midfield your the Casemiro can't stay healthy and all that you're doing a whole nother recycling and bringing in all new players and do it's it's just one after another some of this is not necessarily Ten Hag's fault. The injuries to very, very, very key players wow. might not be Ten Hag's fault. Mm. But at the same time, I'm like, Can you I know me, you I've, I've, right called, I've called for Ten Hag's head three months ago. And, you know, mm -hmm. if they haven't done it yet, with Tuchel gone, Tuchel gone with uh, uh, Pochettino should be gone, but he's mm -hmm. not. Um, he with uh, Who's the other one? With Xavi taking himself out. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, if they haven't done it already, Alex... Can I ask They're you this, Britson? Do, do, yeah. do you believe that Andrzej Postagoglu at Tottenham has done a better job than Eric Ten Hag at Man United? Straight vibes. I yes. do believe Very yes. targeted. Yeah, very targeted. Great. Yeah, I do. Ligario, I do believe it. Miki yes. van der Ven. Papi Matassar mm -hmm. is better. Bisuma is better. Pedro Porro is better. Udogi was a great beginning with Andrzej Postagoglu. Richarlison has improved with Andrzej Postagoglu. You don't get the vibe of these types of improvements and these types oh, that's of correct true. signings with Eric Ten Hag. And for me, that I'm makes it more simple than it is. So I think well, Omar Berada well, we'll will take the things as critical as they are and he will know that this is the time that hey. he has to invest in a world-class manager because every top team will be leaving with their man their managers are leaving but well, we're going to refer more yeah. to that in this video stay tuned Oof. in episode 145 and my last note with the 
Premier League, I just wanted to mention this because it's a mad lineup. Phil Foden mm-hmm. is the best Man City Academy project we've seen. 16 goals this season. World class right now, but the list is unreal. Jeremy Fringpong, Cole Palmer, Jaden Sancho, Felix and Mencha, Rico Lewis, James Trafford, Romeo Lavia. The products of Man City have shown their quality, and this is one of the best academies in the world of football. Again, they know how to sell even their academy products. Something that Man United, I'd, me and you, believe they have a lot of talents. And about measuring yeah, these well, for how much? <clears throat> you should have left for a uh, lot yeah. more. <laughs> or whoever I know, I know. we've seen in the past. Or, uh, Zidane Iqbal, one million to Utrecht? Come on! And he's, he's, bar- <laughs> he's barely playing, though. So oh. maybe they were right in that. I have... I'm oh. gonna I'm gonna say something right now. I, I mean, the development of Manchester. I, I guess there is development, but Romeo Lavia also started at Anderlecht and obviously mm-hmm. did a lot of his development there. Um, and and the same goes for a couple of those guys that you you announced. But if there is one thing that Manchester City has accepted, that for some reason, the rest, as you alluded to, as the the rest of the Premier League has not accepted um, as well is to the way to market them and the way to sell them, exactly. right? You know that it is one of the most um, impossible first teams to get in on the planet. True. So why hold them hostage and hold, you know, hold them back mm-hmm. uh, when they could be out there? Because you didn't even mention, right? Like, well, you did mention Savia, Jan Kuto <laughs> over at Harona. True. They can make their own stories. And, and there is enough competitive football out there that needs to be played that these guys can take the long way back if they'd like to, to the first team, or they can go on. They can help the club that helped mm-hmm. to develop them uh, monetarily, and they can forge their own path forward. Why that has not happened mm-hmm. um, with other clubs, it 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 just like Tottenham. Chelsea, I guess, kind of paved the way. I think Spurs Tottenham is Academy. horrendous at it. The academy, they're horrendous so at it. Quality and they should get better. Right, a lot. I think Daniel Agreed. Levy should be it should be one mm-hmm. of the points that fans should be critical with Levy. It's the way he yeah. sells the academy players. Troy Parra was yeah. once seen as one of the best young strikers mm. in the world. Where is he now? Dean Scarlett. Dean Scarlett. Yeah. It's so true. Oliver Skip was once perceived as a baller. Alfie Delvin, yeah. one of the best players, yeah. young players in yeah. Premier League under 18 leagues. So he sh- they oh. should do better. They should do 100% yeah. better. But let us know. They, do you agree? Yeah. Do you disagree with our statements? Because this was a really good talk in the Premier League Ooh. talk. Will Arsenal win the league? Let us know in the comment section down below.